little bit. It is GCS winter lower uh, winner bracket semifinal of Group A. These are your two contestants in the first match. The debut match, and it's once again Orc Worker who plays the first match of the tournament. Last time uh, he did it as well. So here they are, Fly and Orc Worker. Of course, Fly from China. We don't have to talk too much about him. WCA winner, WCG uh, runner-up, long-time mouse sports uh, player and world elite, obviously. And those players have never met before. Oh, that's actually interesting. Yeah, it's 0-0 zero, zero in stats. Uh, of course, Fly on paper is the better player here, um, 12th best player according to the Back to Warcraft ELO ranking. But I checked Farsight before, you know, the uh, prediction tool of Warcraft 3.info, and it's a 62% win rate, uh, win chance for Fly here. I would say that's wrong at the moment. Well, the numbers don't lie, Neil. <laughs> People lie. But the numbers don't lie. But um, you would uh, put the odds more evenly or more yes. towards Orc Worker even? Uh, more evenly. It's basically 50-50. I mean, in Orc Mirror, a lot of stuff depends on um, starting positions on big maps. It depends on item luck. It depends on creep routes. If uh, Is some player going to tier, two, uh, tier, tier 3 or not? It's pretty unpredictable. And if Lady Luck is on Orc Worker's side, he can definitely score an upset here. Yeah, I think so too. Also, if we want to go a little more into the specifics of Orc Mirror, we have seen a trend, let's say over the last two, three years maybe, mm -hmm. because like uh, with many Orc matchups, Tier 3 seem to be completely off the table. Impossible. Can't do it. That is still true for the matchup against Human and Night Elf nowadays. But of course, against Undead, it has become standard to go Tier 3. And with the Orc Mirror... We're kind of seeing a uh, variance. Mm -hmm. Some players like it, some don't. I, I know, for example, a Focus. I talked to him also here the last couple of days. He really doesn't like it. He says you <laughs> will want to invest as much into Tier 2 as you can, creep up as much as you can, don't have any downtime, be strong at all points, whereas other orcs like to go to Tier 3, get the orb, get master uh, training for the walkers, yes. and some crazy people even go for a TC, but that is very rare. And Orc Worker... Also a guy who goes for the tier 3, and I think Fly is as well. Of course, that's a style you can Depends. decide to uh, switch up here in the best of three. Yeah. Yeah. Orc Worker played an Orc Mirror in the uh, qualifier too, actually. Both against Cash. The first one he lost 2-1, to one. the second one he won 1-2. to two. Cash might not be on Fly's level, but uh, that is a good sign, I guess, that he's not chances and that he has a game plan for those Orc Mirrors. He went to Tier 3 in those games. I wonder if he will repeat it. We have the first game live from Shanghai. What the hell is this? Uh, oh, whoops. That's a... Uh, there, there we go. And we have our setup the way we want to. Yeah, we start on the biggest map we have in the pool, Twisted Meadows. And we all know about the creep trick that you can do especially easily towards the top left where Orc Worker is spawning, and the way he's positioning his barracks, it looks like he will want to go for that. And of course, Orc Mirror. Well, um, it's not really the matchup that we see one Borrow Tech being the most prevalent in, so maybe a scout may come out from Fly, but if he doesn't go in the right direction, he won't be seeing this in time anyways. That's true. And I don't have sound here for some reason. Uh, there is, should be sound somewhere. Ah! Now I think it's working. So, yeah, will he go for the golem or not? We don't see a shop yet. Usually you do that spot with a shop. Um, Fly, of course, on the other side doesn't go for it. We have the Blade Master here. Also no shop from Fly. And, yeah, this could be huge for Orc Worker. Just imagine if he gets a Vamp Aura here, a Tome of Experience. Actually, we've been talking about Vamp Aura yesterday, and we both think uh, maybe not as great as a lot of people say sometimes. But of course, in this matchup, with so many melee units, with so much stuff remaining alive for so long, and getting so much da uh, yeah, right clicks out, and especially for the blade, of course, very nice. And Tome of Experience. What a ca yeah, speedy start for Orc Worker that would be indeed. And I'm certainly assuming this is what we're going to see with the Rock Golem. Sometimes they mess it up. And uh, <laughs> I've seen Focus now twice denying the Rock Golem with the spears from the burrow. Really? So that's something, yeah. <laughs> there was an hold scope. Um, ah, yeah. That's something you don't want to repeat. And we can see it here. The Grunt is moving out. We've seen this before. 
And this... Like Master gets in position yeah. against Night Elves or some other you, uh, races. You can prevent that by pulling some creeps, but this is not possible in Orc Mirror. There's no scout from Fly. Orc Worker with a big, big advantage in uh, the early minutes of the game. And we are curiously waiting for this item. He is not denying it. Rune Bracers. But uh, at least it's a lot of gold. Fly on the other side, zero experience. He's going for the harass immediately. All right. First win walk invested. The grunt is low, but with the speed scroll and stuff, that should be he should be able to save this. Tech is coming in, probably a little later, because he had to use some of these peons in the burrow. Oh, you don't want to lose a grunt in the early game. Scroll speed is ready though. He's going to use it here on the grunt, and that's going to be a lot of healing for him. But now, the Blade Master for Fly might be able to cancel some burrows. Yeah, it's one burrow attack by Fly, he cancels the one burrow, maybe the second one. There's the heal self going on on the uh, Grunt. There's, of course, no second Grunt because of this one burrow attack. And Blade Master is taking quite some hits, but there's enough Wind Walk and he has to run away. He has to go all the way back to his base because he has no heal selves. And that means that he can do anything with the Blade Master for, like, I don't know, half a minute or so. And yeah. uh, interestingly, what, what did it? Two burrow attack by Fly? No, it right. was a one burrow. Ah, one burrow attack. All right, here comes the second grunt. Where's the first one? Ah, over there. Yep. Scouting and for the he base. is decently ahead in the tech, not by too much, but you know, by a little. And of course, he invested a lot into this harassment early. He didn't get the grunt kill, but he delayed the next few grunts by a lot. Orc Worker is still on only a single grunt. But with that being said, Fly may have more grunts here in a moment. He has two now, but what is he really doing with them. At the moment he's just walking away from the other blade. I think it's really interesting that he went for aggression first because maybe he thinks okay this orc worker dude he plays his second offline uh, third offline tournament and he might be nervous so if I approach him really early on he might not be in the flow that you need to uh, to, to play as well as you have to on this stage of the game but orc worker it was close but he managed it and kept the grunt alive. Once again, Fly the aggressor going for some peons here maybe, but there's nothing, not too much that he can cancel. The tier two tech is uh, three quarters done, so he can't cancel any tier two buildings. This is quite a good timing for Orc Worker, I guess. Saves this peon into the burrow. There's damage now, and he does have enough lumber for Beastery and Lodge already, so losing a peon even doesn't hurt that much. Even with his presence here only, he would keep the uh, tier 2 buildings from coming up, but they're not even, you know, they can't even come up yet because he's still only tier 1. He gets one peon. At the very least, he draws first blood, and that's the first bit of experience for him. Both blade masters, of course, still only level 1. Very, very slow creep game at the very yes. least between the two. Also, the multitasking of Fly, not that great. The grunts were standing around for quite some time, and that shows that he's not on top of his game. But now it's a very interesting time for Orc Worker. He has to defend this. The Spirit Lodge is up. The Beast Tree, not yet. Maybe he's putting it proxy, but I don't see... Ah, he doesn't have the lumber for it. So uh, was a little misjudgment here from my side. But when will he reveal himself? There we go. And I think this should be an easy cancel for Fly. Nice, only level one, though. And he doesn't know exactly when the Ice Edge is coming out. He should be having enough time, though. And yeah, that's a cancel. Did cost quite a few hit points, however. And he does have a heal self, and the Grunt should be creeping and tanking for him. On the other side, Fly's tier 2 tech is, of course, done already. Beastery is up to 50%, Spirit Lodge even further, and the Shadow Hunter pops out of the altar. That's the case for Orc Worker in a bit only. And still not a single sign of a Beastery. Also, Lumber issues. This was a good early tier 2 go by Fly. Yep, he delays everything, but is he going to be able to capitalize, as we like to say? For now, he seems to want to go for creeping, and he desperately needs it, with only 29 actually on the Blade Master. He got a bit of bonus experience from that peon kill earlier, as he was still only a single hero. At the Merc Camp, thinking about the Berserker, but not getting it yet. And the Rock Golem here could be a great item for him. Orc Worker was very unlucky earlier. Oh, but he's coming in with a perfect timing. If he steals this, there is a reveal, however. Oh, Blade Master is slow and the Rock Golem is slow. Where's the backstab gonna land? Nice hex by Fly. But he's still not finishing it and still Windwalk for Worker, but he's driven away. So the experience for the Rock Golem goes towards the Chinese. Also, the items there, which is uh, Scroll the Beast. Oh, oh nice hex again. And the Blade Master limps away here. Orc Worker can go into heal self and Windwalk himself. Oh my god, can he actually go for this blade? I don't think so. He's at more than 100 HP now. There's one more Hex remaining, soon to be two, actually. 
Cops really, really risky, but the Shadow Hunter's taking a lot uh -oh. of damage! Oh. And oh, nice hex again, Speed Scroll trying to escape, but the, oh my god, the pick was also Speed Scroll, can you follow him somewhere? There is Windwalk on him at least, oh here comes Org Worker's army with the Shadow Hunter on its own, double hex, who's gonna fall first? Seems like both will survive here, that was pretty cool, he used the Speed Scroll before getting hexed knowing that the hex was coming his way. At least force the speed scroll out of his opponent as well. But as the dust settles, everything is still alive. And the faster tier 2 units that Fly was able to get the two raiders here, maybe now he has a window of opportunity to look for some kills. But now he's fairly far away from the Belarusian. The good thing is, Orc Worker is super close to level 2 for the heal wave. Of course, Fly will get that as Please well, but he's quite far right. behind it. Levels are so important in Orc Mirror. If you can uh, catch a fight with level 2 heal wave versus level 1, it's basically a one fight. Even I could win that. Um, and here we have it. First walkers are coming in. Of course, his tier 2 production is very, very late. He still has some lumber issues here, but he gets uh, the Ensnare upgrade and he has the Spirit Link as well. Wind of Mana stealing can be put to good use, but maybe you rather sell it for a heal scroll or something and fly with the dream item, Vambora. Yeah, Scurry Bone Shines. Amazing. And finally, his walker is coming to join him. Was that a Tome of Experience? Nope, Tome of Strength. Okay. I was wondering, like, here at the lodge so early, why does he not have a walker yet? And he was stuck in the base. <laughs> a bit of a building placement mistake. The peons had to open up the way with the trees. Took a while, though. All right. Blade Master for worker here. Level 2 himself sees his opponent and sees... God damn. He's got the Scourge Bone Chimes. His own SH, though, getting pretty far up in levels here. Two and a half against flies. Well, two and a half. Very even in that regard. The Blade would love to steal this Troll Warlord, but this should be very predictable. Does he want to steal the dust here? He's for an Invul stolen, but here's the reveal and Snare as well. Can he escape there? Fly is known to losing this Blade Master. Invul Potion used. That was a very nice move by, by Fly to secure a kill and another Hex and Heal Wave forced as well. And he gets away without murder, but still with a little distraction. I think Orc Worker can hope for... Oh, second Rune Traces, man. Jesus. Can hope for uh, good items here. I mean, yeah, it's hard if you fight against Vamp Aura, but on Please Twisted, there's six Aura. spots for them. Three of them are gone, so still uh, three remaining. But Fly is looking for the kill here. 46 supply, level 2, and a bit Shadowhunter. But with a Mana Potion already, this looks quite decisive. Two heal scrolls, though for Orc Worker, against only one. However, the guy who gets level 3 shadow first is gonna have a big advantage. But with all these beefy units, as Orc natu natu naturally has, excuse me, might not be too easy. But looking at the Orc Worker army, it is pretty bruised here. Where are the heal selves? Doesn't have too many at all. Oh, and the Kodo! You don't want to start the fight by losing that Kodo. Oh, and you don't want to use your heal waves on level 1 when level 3 is so close. But I think the Kodo will survive for a bit. Heal waves rattling through the answers. Oh, scroll the beast now! Where's the dispel? He desperately needs it. He's not on adept! He can't dispel it! This is 25% damage! Increase. <laughs> Increase, oh my god. And with this, this is looking very rough for Orc Worker. The Kodo is still alive, but all of his units are dropping so damn low. He does still have the two scrolls of healing. When's he gonna use it? He doesn't use it. Loses the Raider before and the Kodo after. This seems to be a, a fight for Fly to win. He's level 3 now on the attack, even dropping the Mantle here for more mana region, I guess, with the... A uh, mana potion, and there we go. Shadow He's at 47 supply against Orc Worker's 43. He's driving him back a little bit at the very least. I think Orc Worker has to go for a hero kill or something. This doesn't look good, but he gets a uh, walker. Wow, nice save, and the Raider falls. Finally, some mana again on the Shadow Hunter. Saves two grunts with it, but he has to go for a hero kill, right? The army is super underwhelming at this point. And with no raiders left for him, finding those kills without the ensnares is so hard to do. Looking for the his own raider kill here, but nicely micro again by Fly. He seems to be on point when it counts. Kodo coming in again. That's the big upgrade for the entire army, trying to devour something. Oh, nice surround onto that one walker. And the shop won't come up. And he will save his grunt here. Not enough damage for the blade. Some peons dead as well. No level 3 blade master on the field, so no level 3 critical strike. Shadow Hunters are quite equal as well. So is Fly going to tier 3? Doesn't look like it. This mass aggression build is not suited for a late attack. Orc Worker stays on tier 2 as well. Still stuck on Lumber there. He's back at 50 supply. He needs Raiders, that's for sure. But apart from that, I think the fight looked worse than it was, actually. Yeah. I, I think in the end it was kind of even, right? 
Of course, uh, both Scrolls of Healing, I think, have been used. And now Orcworker is moving across the map. Does he feel like he won that engagement? Interesting choice. Also, the SH being like the white receiver running <laughs> way far ahead. <laughs> waiting for the pass or something. Yeah, he's, he's waiting for, for the reinforcements there. And he decides, okay, maybe that fight wasn't as good as I thought it was. So let's go for some claws, for a pendant of energy, all those items that can change the outcome of fights. We have three raiders and three walkers for flies. Still no Kodo Beast. Very, very rare to see that. And it looks oh, yeah. like that he's going for the natural. Oh boy, pendant of energy it is. SH picks it up in time. 300 mana for him, by the way. No TP, no speed scroll. This is so hard to escape there. The Kodo Beast once again in trouble. And snared and focused by the Blade Master. Free Raiders coming in. The Blade Master not disabled or anything. Heal wave rattling through. There's only one heal wave remaining for Fly. Can that turn the tides here? He's gonna get the first Raider, but there's two more to use after. One of the Kodo Beasts here for Orcrocker will die, and it seems like he doesn't have mana anymore for Spirit Link. His walkers are out of mana. He does not have Spirit Link in this fight, and that is such a big, massive, you might say, disadvantage. Both Kodo Beasts getting focused. Who's gonna lose his last one first? Might be Fly here, with the end snare still being active, but Worker is gonna lose his last Raider. No more instead to work with. He kills the Kodo, but loses his own, and then pops back a Raider for Fly. He has two end snares now to, worry, to work with, and he seems to be winning this fight handily now. The last Walker is almost gonna die. Actually, Walker has one more left, but does he have a chance left in this game? It doesn't look like it. He's retreating here. Can he salvage this fight somehow? Oh, he can't lose this SH. He can't, but he will. And that's it. GG 1-0 for Fly. With that, Orc Worker is 0-5 in GCS competition. Against Fly, of course, it's no shame. This game didn't go his way at all. I think he was thrown off a bit by this mass aggression of Fly. And to be honest, Fly is playing a lot better than I expected him to play. Nice micro, putting the unit out of the fight with low HP. This is something that I really didn't expect from Fly this tournament. Yeah, absolutely performing in the big fights. But also, um, as you said, his willingness to be aggressive. And I was like, yeah, okay, you're delaying the tier 2 buildings, but you have... 29 experience yeah. dude. Is that like the best idea? But we could see how late the disenchant was. Yes. And how much of a difference that made. The game wasn't over there though, but with that creep jack coming in. <sighs> However, having only one raider, you could really see how you can get abused when you don't have that lockdown against the player at, of the Cavalier. Also, uh, of the vamp aura yeah. played a huge part in those fights. I mean, he, basically every single fight he had a vamp aura, which is one heal scroll per fight, I guess you can say it. Um, and yeah, if he doesn't have that, I mean, the fights were really close. I, I think also one thing that is interesting is the focusing of units. Orcworker constantly without raiders at the end of the fight, uh, focusing a lot on Kodo yep. Beast there, but Fly he had, always had the end, always had the lockdown when he needed it. And he had four grunts throughout the entirety of the game. And I wonder, is that yep. not maybe a little too heavy in the late game? Of course, if you don't lose them in the fights... You don't like want to deny them. That's, yeah. that's a lot of lost value. Um, but the army didn't look perfect for a late game orca. Maybe he should have tried to drag out the game longer to mm -hmm. go into upkeep to get more raiders, get more walkers. He had two kodos, four grunts. So he said as far as that goes, but only two walkers, only one raider. Not quite ideal. Um, something we were mentioning heading into this series. Tier three so far did not play a role at oh. all. Orcworker had no lumber for it, and Fly obviously didn't want to go it uh, uh, to go for it. He wanted to stay at tier two and kill him as fast as possible, which didn't work as intended, I'd say. But in the end, it worked yeah. out. Um, this was a random map, so none of the players really chose it. This is gonna be Orcworker's map choice now, and maybe he has some special plans for specific maps in this matchup. We have some uh, subs and a donation coming in, Remo. Thank you very much, guys. Prometheus 717 uh, Siakara for 10 months already, saying Walker 3 is the best game. Back to Walker is the best channel on Twitch. Thank you very much, my man. Uh, Pusa Ray has subscribed as well, and Pinker1337 for three months already. And the big donation coming in from Zinrock to 20 bucks. Let's get that donation train started. Great to see you guys at GCS again. Grab a beer on me and perhaps a sandwich for 1 to 0. Actually... <laughs> Uh, Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Actually, one to zero wasn't uh, allowed to get in by you know the security guy. He was standing outside. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm like having some connections now. I'm like head of security here, so I I 
told the security guy, oh, now it's the world champion, let him in. Said, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it was quite funny. Yeah, I saw him here earlier, uh, one to zero, and he's not practicing. He's like just watching the games, oh. chilling. I guess the crown gives him uh, comfort and tranquility. Ah, I'm not too sure, man. There's this performance is dropping lately a bit. Early tournament access, uh, exits, NSL mm. group stage. I mean, the group was hard, but usually it's a walk in the park. Doesn't matter in what group he is. He always makes it out of group stages. Also, quarterfinal escape um, or quarterfinal dropout in AWL. So we'll see. But that's uh, a topic for Thursday when he's going to play Lin in the first round. We're that focus group is also going to be sick. Um, pretty much all the groups here, of course, with the best yes. Warcraft in the world. And MapTube is uh, coming up next. Yeah, it's AZ. AZ, yeah. And if Fly wants to keep playing the way he showed on map number one, which is be aggressive, try to get an advantage early, try to, you know, pressure a lot. AZ, very easy to find your opponent, very easy to get to the base to do damage there. If you want to also sentry wards all over the place, you can detect enemy movement yeah. easily and quickly. It's definitely a totally different map than TM. It's very small. TM is really big. There's not too many items for a Blade Master yeah. on TM. There's basically, you can pimp them up to like 40 bonus damage or something if you're really lucky. That I mean, being it, said it, though. It is possible on AZ, especially if you go for the mercenary camps really quick. Um, yeah, but what did you want Yeah, to I say? mean, that being said, uh, Twisted being so good for a blade, those blades were really weak. They had like yes. a circuit or two. Yes. And that's it. And another thing to mention there, Orkwalker was so unlucky with his items. Yeah, two times Rune Bracers, yeah. then an Orc Mirror. <laughs> rune Bracers. Throw away item. And the, uh, and the bell. Those are the two bad items. The rest is good or great. Yeah. So that was really unlucky for him, Indeed. to be fair. Maybe he saved his luck for map two and map three. You hear the chains? We're going into map two in a bit. Here you have your two warriors again. It's China versus the Belarus. We're wearing white and red for Russia, so hopefully it helps a bit. Um, yeah, Flyman. Is it going to be his tournament where he comes out of nowhere like Infi last time? I mean, at GCS Summer, nobody really bet a dime on Infi, and there he was, playing so goddamn strong. Maybe it's Fly this time. Yeah, Fly, uh, he always has the potential. Um, we have been saying this for the last three years, I feel, on our stream. Fly, if he's on point, if he's in his best shape, he can win any tournament. But he is so inconsistent. Yep. Sometimes he looks like the best player in the world, and other times he seems to forget that you find the Blade Master on F1. And he dies <laughs> somewhere on the map where he really shouldn't. So far, um, I would say he has, he played solid. He played well, but he, I, I, like, he didn't blow my mind yet, which, uh, may still come. But it was good enough to defeat Orc Worker on map number one. But the deck has been reshuffled and everything is possible again here. And yeah, as you said, a bit of item luck may go a long way because AZ, a very, very, very hard map to pimp your Blade Master on. But if you find like two slippers and the claws and the circlet, suddenly, boom, you're pretty damn strong and way stronger than your opponent. But that is, to be fair, pretty unlikely. Fly in the upper right, Orc Worker in the bottom left. It's 1-0 for the Chinese. It's match points. He could reach the winner bracket final right here with a 2-0 win. And Orc Worker, as I said, not winning a single map at GCS. That would be horrendous, man. We had all high hopes. He had high hopes. Maybe it was a little too high. Or... He comes back and makes this a series. That's what we're all hoping for, of course. Rooting for our two European boys, Orc Worker and Foggy, all the way. We have two Blade Masters once again. No surprise here, but the Voodoo Lounge position for Orc, uh, for Fly is quite interesting. Haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, usually it's further towards the base. I guess he wants to save those extra one or two seconds. Maybe get to the shop faster, get the circlet. Maybe go for the uh, Berserkers towards the middle to get like the slippers. Can, of course, also be a liability if he gets pushed in the base. That shop is so easy to take out. And Clarities and Mana Potions will be 
so valuable for the SH. But that is all a little later into this game. Is this going to be a one borrow attack again? Is Fly going to look for punishing the second borrow again? I don't think so. Because the Renegade Wizard is just far too juicy, too easy to take out, and has too sweet of a bounty on it. I think it's also the shot position for Orc Walker is quite interesting, uh, because he will go for the item here, maybe here. Then he goes to the shop, gets the clarities, and usually I think he would go to this spot here on the map, but with the shop being here, it would make no sense to run there and then back. So he's going to go there, into the direction of Fly. We have the Gloves of Haste here for the Belarusian, we have the Claws of Attack for Fly. All right, first drop in Fly's favor. Now, are the two just going to keep on creeping, or are they going to look for some aggression? Yeah, Fly crept the entire camp, and this is a very unusual orc creep route, like taking out the two camps for level two. Usually, yeah. they uh, snipe the items quickly and then pass on to the uh, move on to the next item. But Fly's taking it slow. He's going to get a lot of experience from this, and an item for him, a mantle. Good for the Shadowhunter later, of course, and for Orc Worker, oh, the Shadows. cloak and the bad luck continues. Unbelievable. Someone, uh, I don't know, he angered someone. The RNGs is not on yeah. his side yet. Fly going for dust now himself and the circle, of course, so he's with plus eight damage right away. Orc Worker plus zero. Are they contesting this mercenary? Did he see him? It's nighttime. I don't think I didn't so. I didn't see him. No. That would be a huge opportunity. But he's moving down now. Oh, he's going to see it now, though. He's going to be seen seeing it, though, by the other grunts. So Fly should know what's up. He has to have seen this. All right, last hit here is a very big deal. He reveals him. And he's attacking him. More mana, by the way, for Fly. So he can use Windwalk more. Is Orkwalk going to try to gamble on this? Trying to get the Renegade with a backstab into, a hit, into another backstab. No, Fly gets it, I think. Yeah, and the Boots of Pertalas also go towards him. Wow. That is a marvelous start for the Chinese, and Orc Worker must be feeling horrible. He can't this. trade. He can't trade against this. This is plus 14 damage, massive attack speed boost, thanks to the plus agility that Fly has now. And it was just perfectly played. Nice uh, foreshadowing here from your side, uh, telling that he's going to invest both Wind Walks Here's into it. But attack. if it's an item like Boots of Pertalas, so worth it. Cloak of Shadows again. <laughs> Come on! Oh my god. This is starting to get a little unfair here. Can the Blade Master for Fly find some kills here? Oh my god, if he gets the other blade. He has scroll of speed, but that should really not be possible. He doesn't have Dust of Appearance anymore. He used it before. But well worth the investment. I said earlier, it can be really hard to start pimping your Blade Master. But with these drops, this blade is certainly scary already. Unlucky Ensnare on the ground. Does he have the damage to get rid of it? The Blade Master of uh, Worker is certainly hurt. But if he gets this grunt here, he might be back in this game. Nice movement there. Oh, but it's still not enough. Doesn't have a scroll of speed. Can't go for the chase. Everything survives. In the main base, tier 2 has finished for both players. And we have Shadowhunter and Lodge plus Bestiary coming up. Again, so Orc Walker is a little slower than his opponent. He really wants this grunt, but everything is too slow. Obviously, with the Blade Master not being here. There is one more heal self, but of course the Shadowhunter will provide more healing. Oh, Bash! Is this a chance for a kill, maybe? Looks like... Oh, again, he's saving those two units with barely 100 HP. Oh man, those two Blade Masters, when you compare them, it seems like a very, very tough fight for Orc Worker to win. Seems like an impossible to win, one to win, honestly. What does he have to do to get into decent fighting shape? He's getting creep jacked here now, perhaps he needs to get this last hit. He gets it as well, gets the item. The Tome, I guess, uh, goes over towards the Orc from China, but that's okay. Now getting hexed. Is there a reveal here for him? He can't lose his blade here, obviously, and he will get away. He got Well of Illusion, which is an item that was uh, thrown upon in recent, uh, not in, in, in history of Warcraft, but recently it makes a comeback, especially in mirror matches. Uh, these illusions tank up a lot of damage if you micro with A click, which is kind of the case in Warcraft sometimes. And that might be very, very beneficial, especially combined with Spirit Link. Yeah, absolutely. He's using one of them to scout. At the moment, at the north side, doesn't want to give up the next Renegade. But Fly is going to creep the Kobolds here instead. He's so close to have a free blade, by the way. This camp is not quite big enough for that to be achieved, but that's going to be a big upgrade for him. And Orc Walker, he seems to look so 
timid right now. He's like not looking for the opportunity to take control of this game. He seems to be reacting constantly. He's gonna get level 2 SH here at the very least, something that Fly doesn't have. And we saw before how Fly likes to be aggressive in this matchup. Maybe Walker can try to bait oh him. He's coming in again for the Sasquatch. Will he get the kill? He does get the kill. And the, the uh, wards here as well. So he can always reveal the Blade Master. But with his own Blade Master, will he fall there? Is Ensnare ready for Orc Worker? Doesn't seem like it. Is the reveal? Oh my god! Backs up on the Shadow Hunter. This could be the end for Orc Worker right here. Counter Hex coming in. And Ensnare as well. Blade Master's there. Boom! Down goes the Shadow Hunter. He was too greedy to use this. The Scroll of Healing didn't take advantage of this. His own Blade Master is so far away. What is he doing on the other side? Side of the map. Massive mistakes from Orc Worker over and over, and Fly is just cleaning house here. More end snares coming over, and with a few backs of this Grunt is toast, using the first sentry ward here again. A Grunt micro with 10 HP and some healing now. Blade Master for Orc Worker finally arriving to the party, but man, he missed the best of it. All right, at least he's not gonna lose the other hero. And the SH, I guess, was only level one, so he's gonna be back soon, but still heavy losses for Belarus. 41 supply for him, 46. Loses for another fly. grunt in the north, and this is level two for the Shadow Hunter. I thought, okay, Worker, you're going for solo creeping with your Shadow Hunter. That might be your um, your win condition here to get the Shadow Hunter on level two or three earlier, because Fly was creeping at the same time with his Blade Master and Shadow Hunter. But then, of course. The fight happened, level 2 for the Shadow Hunter happened, and this is so much time for Fly right now. Orcworker now taking perhaps a bit of a risk here, going for his natural. If he gets creepjacked here, that could be really, really dangerous, but Fly actually gives him the time. Creeping up in the north, the Blade Master will be coming south now. It should be too late to do anything about uh, the creeps. In the north, he didn't find a great item, and the Rock Golem, he actually gets it! Let me see. <laughs> he gives up! The oh. drops again, and he loses a walker. Oh my god. This is not looking like an even match. I was a little distracted because Fly uh, killed the Renegade with a lightning shield, so uh, wasted a few experience points there, but yeah, yeah man. He may have made a mistake there, but he steals the Wand of Mana Stealing. He kills the walker, and now he's looking to end this game. And look at the Orc Worker's army. What is this? That's his last Windwalk here as well. Hex coming oh, in. No. Double end snare. This is the end for Worker. No way he gets out of oh, there. No. He's stun locked and uh, with the crit. Will he end it in style? Hex backstab. GG. Fly to Worker 0. Belarusia down to the lower bracket. And Fly way stronger than expected here again. That is true, and I don't want to pour salt in the wound, but that was not the level of play you have to present when you want to get somewhere here nope. in this tournament. 0-6 at GCS for Orc Worker. Maybe we were praising him too high, maybe he was nervous again when he sat there in the studio, and maybe it was all the routine of Fly from so many offline tournaments that he just comes in, arrives, raises hell, and leaves. That just looked too simple. All right. <sighs> there was a bit of luck involved as well. I mean, yeah, items the, the on items both were maps were horrendous for Worker and were really good for True. Fly. So it kind of spiraled out of control from there on. But also, Fly delayed his War Mill quite a bit. So he had Raiders and Walkers earlier, while Orc Worker may be going for the later stages of the game already. But he couldn't survive the mid-game. So that was out the window. Yeah. Orcocker has to shake this off now. I yeah. think he knows he can play better than this. Yeah. And it's actually pretty funny because in the interview he told me Orc is all about luck. So <laughs> I don't know how serious he was about that. But maybe he has gotten the bad luck with the items out of the way now. He's in the lower bracket. And our next match will determine who his opponent there is going to be. It's going to be Czech versus Soen. This time it's going to be a Korean matchup. The winner to go up against Fly next and the loser to go up against Orcocker in the lower bracket. That is coming up in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And for that, um, I think we're going to have Nicker for a bit of a co cast. Which I will be think cool. so too. We go into a little break before we start this Night Elf versus Orc. As you say, two Koreans fighting it out. We will determine the opponent of Fly in the winner bracket final, where we determine the first player for the playoffs. And of course, the loser faces Orc Worker there. Back to Warcraft Live from Shanghai, GCS Winter. See you in a bit.